Hello and welcome to the episode 218 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Among other things, today we'll focus on the Silver Beatles finding a new drummer, Brian Epstein trying to calm the commotion for John's Christianity remarks in 1966, and further work in and for Abbey Road. On the 6th of August 1960, the Silver Beatles decided to attend a night at the Casbah Coffee Club in Liverpool. After the cancellation of their beat nights at the Grosvenor Barroom, as we have detailed in episode 211, the lads had quite a bit of time on their hands, despite having to find a suitable drummer to allow them to accept a residency in Hamburg. Check episode 213 for details on that. For a bit, they thought about moving Paul McCartney to the drums, but then the request from West Germany was for a five-piece band. John, Paul, George and Stu Sutcliffe needed an extra member. What could they do? It all came to a head when the Black Jacks walked on the stage of the Casbah. The drummer had a flaming new drum set, and he could play. It was Pete Best, 18-year-old son of Mona Best, owner of the Casbah. During the evening, the Silver Beatles learned that the Black Jacks were about to disband. Apart from Pete, the other members didn't plan on having a professional career in music and needed to leave the band to become fully employed elsewhere. The situation, the possibility to go to Hamburg and the insistence of the four Silver Beatles convinced Pete Best to audition for the position. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performed at the Casbah Coffee Club in Liverpool. In 1963, during the day, Beatles manager Brian Epstein met BBC producer Don Howard to sign the contract for the Beatles to appear in the forthcoming BBC documentary on the Mercy Beat boom. The agreement prevented the band to appear on the ITV documentary Beat City, similar in scope and filmed more or less at the same time of the BBC One. At night, the Fabs were at the Springfield Barroom in St. Saviour, Jersey, for the first of five Channel Islands engagements booked by promoter John Smith. The five nights earned the band £1,000 about £21,000 in 2020 money. 6th of August 1965, Help, the Beatles' fifth album, was released in UK on this date. Just like it had happened with the previous album tied to a feature film, A Hard Day's Night, Side A contained songs from the film's soundtrack, while Side B contained other songs recorded just for the LP. The album spent 37 weeks in the UK sales charts, nine of which at number one. In 1966, John Lennon and Paul McCartney gave a one-hour interview in Cavendish Avenue, London, for a BBC radio programme called The Lennon and McCartney Songbook, a production similar to the Granada Television's The Music of Lennon and McCartney. John and Paul were called to cast a critical eye on 15 existing productions of their songs by other artists, including the Mamas and the Papas, Ella Fitzgerald and Peggy Lee. The programme was aired on the 29th of August, between 4.30 and 5.30 pm. Meanwhile, in the United States, the Jesus situation had become so volatile that Beatles manager Brian Epstein considered cancelling the impending American tour altogether. John Lennon's infamous comment, covered in episodes 63 and 210 of What A Fab Day, caused a host of conservative Americans to take action against the Beatles and what they represented. After all, these were four youngsters of loose morals that rode the tide of a teenage craze by popularizing black music. Over 30 US radio stations had joined a call to boycott any Beatles record, and anti-Beatles feelings were fueling public destructions of the band's records and merchandise. Anyhow, despite suffering from glandular fever, Epstein was forced to fly to New York City on this date 
to give a press conference aimed at explaining John's remarks and to curb the virulence of the outcry against the band. He was only partially successful, but the plans for the tour had to go ahead. Fast forward to 1968 and we find the Beatles returning at the Trident Studios in London. Between 5.30 and 7.30 pm, a mono mix of Hey Jude was produced from the stereo mix completed on the 2nd of August, as detailed in episode 214. Later in the evening, John Lennon went to a fashion show at The Revolution, a discotheque in Mayfair, where he was interviewed by BBC Radio's Matthew Robinson. The interview was included that night in Late Night Extra, broadcast by BBC Radio 1 and 2 between 10 and midnight. On the 6th of August 1969, George Harrison overdubbed three acoustic and electric guitar parts on Here Comes the Sun in EMI Studio 3 from 2.30 to 11.00 pm, while Paul McCartney, working from room 43 at the same time, recorded a Moog solo on Maxwell's Silver Hammer, producing it sliding his finger on a ribbon that would pitch the notes depending on the position of the finger. After that, between 11.00 pm and 1.00 am, several stereo mixes were produced in Studio 2. Now that the Beatles had recorded the basic tracks for all the songs for the new album, they could concentrate on finishing their own pieces without necessarily working together. This leaves me with just one more task for the day, reminding you to visit www.simonmas.com support and do something to show me your appreciation for the work I have been doing on this series. Since I would really like to create a community of music lovers, even just sharing this episode with your friends would mean a lot. Thank you for helping out in any way you can, and see you tomorrow to talk about the first concert of the Quarrymen at the Cavern Club. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.